Hello everyone, my name is Chan, Chan Zi Kang from UOW Malaysia KDU. Today I would like to share on a topic for merger and acquisition about reverse takeover. What is reverse takeover? Why would company would like to pursue a reverse takeover? What is the challenges for reverse takeover? Let's take a look at the following screen. A reverse takeover as opposed to a normal takeover or acquisition, which is usually involved with a larger company that is at a listed company position who take over a smaller company that could be unlisted for the purpose of expansion. But in the reverse takeover, as you can see on the left hand side of the column, it involved with the larger company, in this case is company A. However, it is unlisted who attempt to take over a smaller company, which is B, which is listed company status. And with the reverse takeover processes, on the outset, it seems to be like a company A is taking over company B. However, after the reverse takeover, as shown on the screen, the company A will still hold the main identity in the combined company but it will become a listed company position by riding on the listed company positions in company B as before. So in between the processes, it will involve with share for share exchange as part of the purchase consideration. So who become the main owner of the listed company B? The answer is a shareholder of A. So as such, the shareholders in company A would now own the entity of company B, which is a listed company. In reverse takeover, once the transactions is completed, the branding, the name of the company on the listed company positions will become company A. So that processes involved the exchange of entities from a victim company, which is smaller in size, but it is listed, and it is taken over by a larger company. However, it is unlisted. So at the end, the identity of a smaller company that become the main identity of the combined company, in this case is A, that process is called reverse takeover, or some of the books were called reverse merger. Why is company A plan to undergo reverse takeover? And the answer is given on the column two, advantages of reverse takeover for company A. I have listed some of the key advantages for company A who pursue a reverse takeover. The time they spend and the cost they involved to get company A to go for listing is much shorter and much cheaper as comparing to company A that got listed through a normal listing journey. That would be a big attraction for many companies that would like to go listings via reverse takeover. The second advantage, penetration into new market. It could be a situation where the locations of company B, it's at a new market or a new country where A would long aim to enter into the market. Via reverse takeover, it opened the door gate for company A to put up a presence into the new market or new region. Last but not least, market power. With an enlarged size or scale of operations of the combined company, it allows company A to have a stronger bargaining power in terms of supply chain, in terms of bargaining power, in terms of pricing it will get stronger than before. Finally, what are the key challenges? What are the setbacks and disadvantages for company A who pursue a reverse takeover strategy? In competent management, due to the lacking of the experience in managing a listed company, that would put company A into a difficulty positions of managing a listed company due to lack of experience. Secondly, challenges in complying to all the regulatory requirements, 
stock exchange, security exchange commissions requirement are of compulsory to be complied of for every listed company. Lacking of managing a listed company, lacking of experience in fulfilling all the regulatory requirements will become a key challenge for company A in meeting all the compliance requirements. Last but not least, sustainability of the combined business will be of doubtful. The harmonizations of staff member, synchronizations of strategy, standardizations of shared value between two different companies could be a challenge that will never be underestimated. These are all the key challenges and the key values that would justify whether a reverse takeover would be of viable, which in the examinations of AFM, it required the candidates to blend in the information, the clue from the scenario and apply the weighting into each and every of the advantage and disadvantage to justify whether the reverse takeover is justifiable. That's become the writing skill and the techniques of answering the written questions of evaluating the viability of reverse takeover. That's all for my sharing session. See you then on the next sessions of sharing. Thank you.